I wanted to make a video today about my human power generator that I made. And uh, um, I just made it out of a bunch of spare parts I had laying around. Granted, um, some items I had bought in the past, but uh, it's really pretty simple. Um, if I can make one, um, anyone can make one. Uh, it was a pretty fun project. Just took me a few days off and on working on it to get it completed. But uh, anyway, pretty fun, pretty entertaining. You can use it to power your TV while you're watching it. Just, you know, some little novelty uses. Uh, it works, it doubles as an exercise bike because the alternator puts some load on the bicycle. So it's like riding a normal bicycle. So um, anyway, just uh, we'll go through a quick overview of kind of the construction, how it's set up, and then we'll give it a little test run. So looking at the construction here, it's really pretty simple. I just used a indoor bicycle trainer that's adjustable, and I got that off eBay a few years ago for about 30 bucks. Um, that's pretty simple, you know. I just used a whole saw and uh, measured um, the legs of the trainer out and drilled a few holes and then um, laid some old shelving over it uh, to make a platform. And this is just a old... Um, my old 74 F100's alternator and uh, so really I just went and got some brackets from Lowe's and then this little turnbuckle and uh, I had to buy this belt from O'Reilly's um, they have belts by size but uh, you know usually you're gonna be if you're making one of these you're probably gonna have an alternator from this century so you're gonna have a serpentine belt and usually those are reverse drive you want to make sure you have your alternator spinning with your wheel the correct direction that it turns in the engine so um, this one is set up this way but most of them will be flipped around the other way if they have a serpentine belt more likely than not so um, that's something to note but this uh, you know I've seen a lot of them before and this turnbuckle design is really nice because I can run a bicycle with a 20 inch rim this is a 26 inch rim on it right now up to a 29 inch rim and uh, I have enough adjustability to um, you know, be able to run all those different sizes with just this belt based on my alternator location. So um, I'm pretty pleased with that. That's pretty good. Um, you know, you can adjust belt tension, but naturally you want the least amount of tension you can have without slippage because you're fighting that tension when you're pedaling. So, um, but yeah, it works out pretty nice for that. Um, what's also different about this one versus other ones I've seen is I have an old lawnmower battery that I have here in the system. And that's really nice for uh, when you're pedaling and you put a load on it, like with a TV or something, you know, you're charging the battery, but the item that you're using is sucking power from um, the battery and not from you. Because usually when you put a, when you're drawing more load, there's more load on the alternator, but you know, and don't get me wrong, there's still added load to you, but uh, it helps to greatly minimize that load when you have a battery um, of at least, you know, lawnmower size in the system. So, and then it helps to keep a consistent output voltage. So, you know, your voltage isn't spiking around and you're not messing up whatever you're powering. So, that's pretty nice. Um, but yeah, that's pretty simple. The bait, the wiring is, um, it looks really bad, but it's pretty simple. Basically, the inverter is hooked to the battery. And the battery is, uh, you know, to your battery terminal on the alternator and basically I just copied the wiring from my old F100 so I pulled out my um, voltage regulator I didn't need all this because I put a one wire alternator in my truck but um so I have my external voltage regulator and I just copied the color the the wires that ran from my alternator to my voltage regulator and located those the same um, and everything you see here that's black is a ground wire um, I hooked everything in the system together. I grounded it all together so that, um, it would have the best ground it could possibly have. And that's shown to work pretty good. Um, move those away from each other so I don't touch. So overall, got some blowing up my phone over there. <laughs> um, overall the system was pretty simple to put together. And if you have any wiring questions about what alternator you might plan to use, um, just shoot me a message of what it came out of and I can the modern alternators are pretty simple um, I can direct you along with that but uh, You know kind of the functionality of how this actually works 
So alternators are kind of interesting. They're not like a generator. They take power to make power. That seems kind of silly, but uh, you know, without having power to supply to, it's just a bunch of coiled wires um, spinning around each other essentially. So it's not really doing anything, but once a system there's power sent to it and it's magnetized, then it can make power. That's what's nice about having a battery in the system. If you didn't have this, you'd have to have a 12 volt battery pack anyway. So, um, you know, that's why we have this in the system anyhow. But basically what you do is I have the bicycle in the tallest gear possible because you want to spin the alternator as fast as you can um, and able to, uh, you know, create the most voltage. So um, what you do is you get the bicycle up to speed and then you'll flip your switch, which sends, which kicks on your voltage regulator and sends power to your alternator. Now, once you do that, there will be a load on your bicycle you know, for momentarily a pretty strong load that you have to overcome. And once you get your RPM up, then uh, that load goes away and it's quite a bit easier to pedal and you're making voltage. And we can see that with our uh, multimeter here and we'll display that in a second. But um, yeah, pretty much this is a simple um, little system I put together. I know the wiring looks tricky, but that's just because it's this old school 45 year old alternator. But uh um, yeah, pretty simple. So anyway, I'm going to hop on it and we'll give it a test and we'll watch it charge at 14 volts. Okay, so this is kind of difficult because I don't really um, have anyone helping me to record, but you can see here that we're sitting right now at 12.43 volts or so. And um, what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to get the bicycle up to speed and then I'm going to... Uh, Flip our switch, which turns on our voltage regulator, which provides power to the alternator, so then the alternator can make power. Um, so anyway, we'll get it rolling here. So the first thing you want to do is be in a pretty high gear, is you need this alternator spinning at least, you know, about 2,000 RPM plus. So um, I got the bicycle in the uh, highest gear possible. So we'll get it up to speed and flip the alternator and then I'm going to have, it's going to fight me a little bit. But once I get it up to, uh, once I'm pedaling it up to speed, then um, the force required evens out quite a bit and it's pretty simple. So anyway, we'll get it up to speed. And we can see that we're we got a little more voltage, but it'll bleed down to about 12 volts. So anyway, from that you can see that the uh, bicycle powered generator works pretty well. So anyway, that's pretty much it. Um, I plan to make another video here in a bit of uh, you know powering various things around the house with it because I think that uh, you guys can appreciate that. But you can see that it works. We're putting out a good 14 volts of charging power. Um, it's pretty simple to make. Like I said, if I can put it together, anyone can put it together. It did not take me very long at all or very much planning. It was pretty, pretty simple and I'm no engineer. So um, yeah, pretty good. Works out well. Um, it's really nice having this battery in the system because you can ride it for a long time and charge the battery up if you'd like. And then you could even use it to power smaller items when uh, you're not riding the bicycle. So we flip our inverter in here we got our phone plugged in you know we're sitting here at a good you know 12 volts and it's charging the phone up so overall you know pretty simple and uh worth giving a shot it's pretty neat or at least uh, <laughs> a good science fair project with your kids so anyway that's all i have to say it works out good there you go